Now we've got a new section of the show to dive into here. Um, inquiries from the foundation. Uh, we decided that we would let our foundation members ask a question and they were offered that chance and David Press offered a couple of questions, great ones to us. And he wanted to know, first of all, um, and he is a foundation member, thank you so much for your membership. And thank you to all foundation members out there that help us create the program that we do, help give us what we need to help um, do all this work. So anyway, and uh, we have a donate button down there, by the way, if you feel like clicking it and you haven't donated, those that have, we thank you. I sometimes forget to thank the people that are donating. Um, it all helps us run our school program. But anyway, back to the inquiries from the foundation. Um, he wanted to know, what has the space station been up to? What experiments have been happening? And how are they benefiting humanity? So just a small question from the foundation to kick off this new one. And if you have a question in mind and you want to send it in, join our foundation and you can send in a question. Maybe we'll pick it next month. But I turn this over to Brendan. Brendan, are you out there? There you are. Um, so what did you find that's been going on on the space station? Well, uh, some interesting little updates from uh, one of humanity's most remote laboratories, uh, which would be the International Space Station, all the way out there. I did some research, uh, found out that there are some 2,000 odd experiments that have been happening on the space station. And of course, a lot of them are really uh, nitty gritty, kind of minute things, that, but all of them are impacting us in some way, one way or another, uh, some of course more so than others. Uh, and I'd love to talk about some of them. So if we go to the next slide here, uh, the first thing that comes to mind for me uh, when I think of Work that's being done on the space station is if we go to the next one, uh, access to water filtration. Of course, uh, resource conservation on the International Space Station is incredibly important. Uh, the astronauts there, I mean, sending anything up into space is really expensive, uh, and people who are living uh, out in space are going to need water and food, all these things. One of the things that's done is uh, filtering things like sweat and urine that the astronauts are producing and turning it into clean drinking water. Uh, and so here you see a picture, this is a, a picture that NASA took uh, of them using some of that water filtration out in the real world in places where getting access to clean water is difficult. Uh, so for me, that's kind of like the main, oh, of course, you know, clean water is, is huge. There are tons of other things that they're doing as well. If we go to the next, uh, there are plenty of things happening uh, as far as medicine and medical, uh, medical research, things like uh, different Viruses or bacteria uh, happen to grow a lot faster uh, and mutate more rapidly out in space. So doing experiments on disease uh, diseases is something that's pretty common up there, uh, as well as growing proteins. You'll see this image of a purple protein structure. Uh, on the left side of that image is how a protein would form on Earth, but without any gravity impacting it, the protein can form a lot stronger. So a lot of things about growing proteins for uh, different medicines, and you'll see uh, Cosmonaut Shapirov uh, getting a an ultrasound done on around his eye, looking at the bone around his eye, and uh, so things like that, just out in the field, kind of ultrasounds to do medical tests, are are things that are developing and reaching out on the International Space Station. Let's go to the next slide. There's plenty of other stuff too. Uh, there's lots of stuff with food, as I said, resource conservation, incredibly important. Uh, so here you'll see astronauts Walker and Hopkins. Uh, astronaut Walker is. Uh, is working on some growing bacteria and other very high nutrition density foods uh, that can be eaten and stored out in space that are, you know, high calorie and nutritional value with very low uh, mass and other things like that. And then uh, astronaut Hopkins over there is looking at some plants. They're growing plants, of course, so they can see if you can grow plants in space but also the way to distribute water to the roots of all of these plants because there's no gravity, there's no water that's naturally you know, in soil here. Things that are important in places where food is scarce or where water is scarce, doing farming out in the desert where it might be hard to irrigate your crops. This is research that's being done to look into that as well. Now, if we go to the next slide, you can also, there are a lot of industrial uh, impacts. Uh, 3D printing has been developed in space uh, to make sure that the 3D printers are working incredibly well. You know, they're, they're printing without gravity. Those have been affecting us here. I have a 3D printer in my closet, actually. It's running right now. Uh, and that has been influenced by the International Space Station. And then growth of things such as crystals, uh, those happen to grow without the influences of gravity. So for a lot of industrial purposes, more technical than I understand, uh, but growing crystals is something that's also being done uh, and is impacting our understanding of how those things grow. 
there are a ton of other little odds and ends too. We're studying biology and things like fruit flies by having them live up, you know, being born and living their entire lives out without any gravity or the radiation of space. Uh, colloids, which are, uh, gosh, they're materials suspended in, in a fluid substance. Uh, so things like skin creams, uh, those sort of things are being tested up there. And uh, even just transitions from states of matter are being inspected in fine detail. Uh, and even the stuff that you'd think, no, there's no way the International Space Station well, if we go to the next slide, uh, even something like soccer, uh, there's actually uh, an experiment being done right now with a soccer ball up on the internet station where they're uh, checking to see the impacts of a free flying object uh, in its environment around it. So even something like a soccer ball, uh, they're testing and they're trying to learn more about uh, the physics of a sport like soccer. Um, yeah, and of course, yeah. things where our eyes to the future of being out in space, everything that they're doing is so we can know if we're gonna be able to live out in space, what food we can eat, what sort of things we can bring, what we can make out there, all of those things. Thank you for that report. It's absolutely true. If we wanna live out in space, we need to learn how to do it. The International Space Station has really been our first, you know, our first real attempts to do a lot of this stuff. So thank you, David Press, for that inquiry from the foundation. If you want to have one, you too can join the foundation and do that. Um, also, don't forget, we had some guests. Uh, my advisor, Raja, and his wife, Mila, joined us. I forget what year that was. Uh, this last year feels like it was about 14 or 15 of them. But back on our YouTube channel, you can go find um, the show where Mila talks about her research on fruit flies and uh, the health of them and what it happens to them up in space. So all that is a uh, could happen to us too. So very important research that's going on. I'll drop there. a link so to that in the thanks chat. Thanks to the foundation for all thank you, you do out there. And, and thank you, Brendan, for the report.